Over $10 million will be allocated to the new proposed Housing Community Improvement Plan. The Barry City Council will repeal the existing bylaw as more funding is received from both the federal and provincial governments to address housing affordability. The focus of the plan is on affordable housing and aims to increase housing supply, affordability, and accountability in using public funds for housing development. During last Wednesday's General Committee meeting at Barry City Hall, the Council expressed concerns about the adequacy of current definitions of affordable housing and the effectiveness of the plan. When we do this and we put five million in, my question is, how do we measure success? Um, what are we looking to get? Um, I think it's pretty easy to develop a program where we give out money. But I, I'm really concerned about what we get back. So how many units are we expecting? How many are we expecting affordable units? Uh, what are our targets uh, for this money that we're spending? Through you, Marinettel, to Councillor Reetma, um, right at the moment, the intention in terms of targets for the City of Barrie really is the housing pledge and the numbers that um, the municipality has been given for uh, the next couple of years. So in 2024, it's uh, that number is 1917. So in terms of success and in terms of what staff are hoping to do with um, the CIP, it really is to... Um, to, to get you, those units built um, and that's and to try to continue to meet the housing targets uh, issued by the province. The council is aware that additional building faster fund money is tied to those housing starts and foundation start numbers and so from an intention um, that's, that's the piece. Councillors also discussed better supporting affordable housing projects and exploring additional funding mechanisms to address the housing affordability crisis more effectively. The proposed plan will be considered for final approval in an upcoming city council meeting. Following is the video of the meeting. We'll now move on to Deputy Mayor Thompson. You have held DEV 027-24, the proposed housing community improvement plan. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I'll put the motion on the floor as printed and I have an amendment. I just want to note uh, Councillor Morales's um, conflict of interest here. We're now on the subject. Uh, you've put the motion on the floor. You have an amendment. You may read the amendment. Thank you, Mayor Nardo. My amendment reads as following. To delete paragraph 5 and replace it with the following. The $2 million from the Federal Housing Accelerator Fund and the $3,035.50 from the Building Faster Fund received from the provincial government in March 2024, I got the date right, allocated to the Housing CIP Reserve Fund and that the balance of the Building Faster Fund be transferred to the Tax Rate Stabilization Reserve. And I can speak to that. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so in the funding formula of the CIP uh, that staff put forward, it's just taking some of the federal money and the provincial money taking a little bit from both and then just unparking the money to put in right now it's just sitting in limbo to put it into the tax stabilization reserve so it's pretty self-explanatory thank you uh, deputy mayor uh, the amendments on the floor any questions or comments councilor Reitman? i have a question for staff um with this amendment i take it it's about five million dollars we're putting in 5.6 million that we're putting in there um, so, uh, Ms. Banfield, I guess, um, when we do this and we put five million in, my question is, how do we measure success? Um, what are we looking to get? Um, I think it's pretty easy to develop a program where we give out money, but I, I'm really concerned about what we get back so how many units are we expecting how many are we expecting affordable units uh, what are our targets uh, for this money that we're spending 
through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Reitma. Um, right at the moment, the intention in terms of targets for the City of Barrie really is the housing pledge and the numbers that um, the municipality has been given for uh, the next couple of years. So in 2024, it's uh, that number is 1917. So in terms of success and in terms of what staff are hoping to do with um, the CIP, it really is to um, to, to get you, those units built um, and that's and to try to continue to meet the housing targets uh, issued by the province. The council is aware that additional building faster fund money is tied to those housing starts and foundation start numbers. And so from an intention, um, that's that's the piece. So there are definitely, um, and again, just wanted to flag, this is, this is a housing CIP. So in terms of affordable housing, um, there, there's affordable housing targets in the official plan. Um, there's some affordable housing targets in our agreements for the housing accelerator fund. Um, but in terms of the CIP, the intention is to incent all types of housing. Um, so just to be clear, we're not targeting affordable housing in this fund. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Councillor Rima, we're not t uh, only targeting affordable housing. We're certainly prioritizing it. If, if Council takes a look at the scorecard, there's, there's, um, that's how uh, projects would get weighted and scored in terms of, um, you know, how closely aligned they are to the Council's goals. And so certainly, if there are affordable housing units within the project, there are. Uh, the scores are, are relevant to that, um, but we are pr prioritizing um, all types of housing. Um, if I can just follow up. Um, so we don't have a, a target for affordable housing in, in this program at all. Uh, I mean, you're hoping to get some, but I guess my, my concern is um, you know, uh, we need affordable housing. I mean, we need housing of all kinds, but we need affordable housing. Um, and at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, um, I guess I'm concerned that we spend $5 million and uh, what are we going to get in terms of affordable? That's my... Mayor Nuttall, through you to uh, Councillor Reitma. Um, so as I said, the Housing Accelerator Fund does have a target for uh, 210 affordable units, and the Housing Accelerator Fund is, is, is quite condensed. So the intention would be to have a minimum of 210 affordable new units um, within the next couple of years because of the way the funding is. So in terms of um, what staff are working towards that that 210 target is still valid um, and presumably some of those units if not all of them would be supported through the CIP um, but that's kind of the way the the targets um, are set up okay I, I, I guess I'm 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 pleased with that answer in the sense that uh, you know at least we have a number of units that we're that we're expecting to get by spending the five million this year, and who knows what we'll spend next year. Um, I guess I have one other question. Um, Simcoe County is building a building now, on uh, or going to be building shortly on Rose Street. Um, is that building eligible for this money? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Ritma. Yes, absolutely. Staff would expect that um, the County of Simcoe would be applying for a CIP for that project. Uh, just one more question. So, um, if we were to um, give the, say, the whole $5.6 million to the County of Simcoe, do we know how, what kind of how many more units of affordable housing would be in that project? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Reitma. So there is already quite a mix of unit types and unit 
um, price points and within the 20 Rose Street project, which council will hear more about. It's going to a public meeting on June 12th, and you'll hear a little bit more about that. But some of the, so it's 215 units altogether. Some of the units are rent geared towards income. Some units are um, rental at 80% of the average market rate. Um, some of the units, 99 units, are at 100% um, of the annual um, monthly rates, rental rates, it's in 28 units at 120%. So there is already built into um, the program or to, to the project a whole bunch of varying um, opportunities for different price points. Uh, we, we did look at whether or not um, additional money might change that um, flexibility, but you know, at the end of the day, it really actually works out to more like 80% um, affordable, 20% at market. So that's actually a pretty good mix for a project of this size and type. Yeah, Councillor, we had um, the uh, Simcoe County Housing meeting uh, after uh, the the uh, uh, County Council meeting uh, yesterday, and uh, one of the themes that is continually explored is the cost of a unit uh, through the county's um, operation versus uh, what we would expect from maybe a private sector builder delivering some of that to market. Um, and so, you know, I would be, I'd be nervous about putting all of our eggs in a, in a county basket at this point, um, unt until we see what potentially could come back from, uh, from the private sector or from not-for-profit sector. Um, you know, you you see a unit uh, cost of, I think it's uh, five or six hundred thousand dollars through the county at Rose Street, I and mean, I'm going on memory. I someone correct me if I'm wrong, but um, and I'm I'm hearing from not for profits two hundred and fifty thousand a unit. Uh, so uh, I would I would I would personally, if I was sitting around that, I'm not on that that uh, CIP committee. I'd be very nervous to just hand over a check to the county to say, here's all of our money gone and uh, not necessarily get a whole lot more in terms of the, the housing stock. Uh, the, the other thing I just want to highlight to everybody is that this isn't the only thing we're doing, right? Like from affordability, we have Vespra. Uh, the county said yesterday that they were going to request the city of Barrie to move the, uh, the, the portables, and for lack of a better word, uh, someone will have a better word for it than me, uh, from Rose Street down to Vespra uh, and to uh, create a rehousing program uh, there. I don't believe that that's something that we've seen yet, um, but uh, we should expect it to come forward. And uh, they have a whole bunch of other projects through throughout the county that they're, that they're working on. Uh, when it comes to the CIP folks, like $10 million is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. We're not going to single-handedly get units built, but if there's, as the 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 prices come into line, uh, hopefully they do. If we can incent some of that to happen uh, quicker, I think that this is great. One of the things that I think uh, we need to be realistic about is that there was three point five million dollars, something like that, left over, and that tells me there was three point five million dollars not really requested for a project that made a lot of sense. We've increased the number, we've changed the strategy, but if the market just ain't there, we could make it $100 million under the same criteria. It still wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, so uh, I think we have to be realistic that the market needs to be in a place where it can take advantage of the CIP in order to, for it to be uh, effective going forward. Uh, if there's any other questions or comments with regards to the amendment um, for from Deputy Mayor Thompson? Okay, see none. All those in favor? It carries. On the amendment, Deputy Mayor, or sorry, Councillor Corser, after the amendment, uh, you had your hand up to speak to the CIP at large. Um, just to follow up on um, the thread that uh, Councillor Ritma had pulled. Uh, so, to be clear, the CIP through its scorecarding system is um, 
prioritizing affordable builds through scorecards, but it's not prioritizing affordable builds completely. Like it's, it's, we're getting a mix, like you said, 80-20 is the goal. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser. So the way the scorecard would work is, is if you actually um, were doing an affordable project, you would get more points. And then at the end of the day, when you're prioritizing the projects and, and the dollars, um, the projects that scored higher would be the ones that would get funded first. And, um, and if you kind of ran out of money, I guess, if you will, uh, then again, the projects that were funded first or had the higher scores would be the ones that would um, be successful. So, um, so the idea of what the CIP is for people to come to the city with their projects and their applications um, and how they meet the criteria of the CIP um, and that's typically the way it's kind of worked in the past so it's up to the applicant to come in and say this is why their project meets the criteria and again if they have some affordable um, affordable units within there then they'll be ranked accordingly so if I may uh, uh, then of course this is like a call out to say, hey, we've got assistance for affordable housing and this is the scoring and this is how we're gonna support that. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, correct. That would be one aspect uh, as well, purpose-built rental. Yes. So if you're purpose-built rental projects or even some of the bigger tower projects, it's really just a, a call for all developers and all development projects to, to come to the table um, to say, hey, this is our project and, and this is how the city could help because we have heard that it's different for each project. Mm -hmm. Just my, my concern is like this with this funding, like you said, is, is uh, if, if the, the nonprofit space is um, been lagging, not lagging, has been finding challenges over the last few years that they are not um, able to come to the table, then this funding could go to high level rent, uh, high level condos. Is that correct? If it, the money is going to go out the door, but if, if nonprofits, let's say, nonprofits are um, not able to step up, then this could go to um, like expensive condos so, so uh, I'm just no, gonna just gonna jump in there because it's just a little bit of politics in the sense of mm -hmm. the high-level earners the way that the CIP is structured in terms of of the strategy anybody can apply so for anything uh, the reality is that there's a set of criteria that staff have outlined that say if you're yes, increasing affordability you get a better score and you have a higher chance of receiving funding but that doesn't mean if there's a condo tower that's being built on H block, because that's you know one we talk about a lot, uh, that uh, they wouldn't be able to ask for money in order to receive funding as well. And it's arguable that there would be high cost uh, units inside of that facility as well. And they would be able to apply. I'll do stuff to have his ask for staff. Thank you. That's um, great. So, okay. um, so if I may. There's, I've got a couple more questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, so with the uh, when uh, the report for um, on the Development Services Housing Bulletin version V uh, 1.1 uh, for the table of affordable housing, affordable rental units, I did a little bit of <laughs> sketchy math. Um, so for um, one person rental is fourteen thirty a month, one thousand four hundred thirty dollars a month is considered affordable according to the province. Um, a full time person, um, a full time wage, minimum wage starting October because minimum wage is going up is seventeen twenty an hour. Um, then it works out to be after taxes, uh, two thousand seventy six dollars take home. And average price of groceries, and this was a few weeks ago when we had this conversation, was $440 a month for one person. And that is last few weeks ago. It just keeps going up for groceries. So for rent, $1430. Food, $445. And let's throw in a monthly bus pass for $92. That ends up at almost $2,000 a month. That's $1,967 which leaves $109 a month because utilities are not included. So that would be $109 a month for one adult, for utilities, any insurance, clothing, medicine, or anything that they would possibly need. It's like $25 a week. 
So, uh, and that's for one person in a one bedroom apartment. When you do the math further, when you're talking about a single caregiver or parent with one child, or an, an adult caregiver, or anything along those lines, that's the, the thought that $1,145, or sorry, uh, sorry, one bedroom, I'm mistaken, $1,430 a month for one bedroom. Um, looking at those numbers, these are just not affordable. And I'm wondering uh, if there is some flexibility with what we consider within the CIP within our city, every city being different. Um, I'm wondering if uh, the flexibility that we have about the proposed rental rates, can we change what, um, these rental rates to be a little less for um, what would be considered affordable for our city? Or is this something that's mandated by the province, or what are the, the, the rules around this? Through you, uh, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Corser. So, um, two things just off the top. So, the, barrier, the, the way staff are proposing to um, have that information in the, in the bulletin um, is intended because previously it was actually in the CIP. So, any time it actually changed, you had to change the whole CIP. So, mm -hmm. we're putting it, uh, suggesting to put it in a bulletin so there is that flexibility to uh, amend it, I think, from time to time, uh, according to the executive director, I think is the wording that, um, that we have in there. Um, so, that that's initially why we, we did it the way we did, as opposed mm -hmm. to having it in the CIP. Um, and then secondly, um, you know, staff grabbed the, um, uh, the, the affordable rates um, as sourced um, on uh, the bottom of the document, and it, it is the standard practice of, of how you use the CMHC data, the area data, um, to uh, tie not only income, uh, which is obviously what we get as well from census, but uh, to the local market. So there are, um, there's this term deeply affordable, and so certainly that um, would uh, work for different income percentiles, and we definitely, um, in the scorecard actually score projects higher if they actually are providing deeply affordable units versus just affordable units. Um, and so that's really how staff would um, suggest tackling um, a different, we wouldn't necessarily recommend changing the definition because it is standard, it's, it's industry practice, it's, it is supposed to take into account, as I said, uh, area incomes and area uh, rental or purchase prices. Um, but as I said, definitely there's the ability to um, to rank projects higher if they're offering more deeply affordable units. Uh, just a follow-up, if I may. Um, the, the uh, so um, I, I, I'm probably incorrect on this, but I had thought um, that there was a hard definition of affordable, which is what we're looking at, but I didn't think there was a hard definition for deeply affordable. I thought that was more of a vague kind of uh, uh, saying, like, as opposed to geared to income or... Uh, so does deeply affordable actually have a defined, like, point to it? Like, is there a definition of deeply affordable, a mathematical equation? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, it uh, typically means less than the 60%. So if it's less than the 60% income decile, then that's considered deeply affordable. So it could be $10 less a month and that would be deeply affordable? Could just be less than the 60%, correct. Mm. So yeah, that, that's where I, I, I really, this is a real sticking point to me because like you said, like it's, it, this is to assist people and affordable is, as we've, as we've all said around the table that, you know, affordable really isn't affordable as the definition has been laid out by what has been given by the province. And I, I, I am glad that the scoring card is uh, uh, kind of prioritizing um, things that are, better for our community on an affordable sense but I just I always have such a hard time with this definition of affordable because I as I outlined what is affordable and this is just not affordable but that's an issue I guess I have with the definition of the term but thank you yeah, thank you Councillor Corser Councillor Rima Councillor Corser just um, reminded me of something that I should have asked um, and this is a question also to Ms. Banfield. Um, is there a provision in our scorecard for rent geared to income? Because I think that's really what Councillor Corser is driving at, is, is having um, a rental uh, rate that is geared to income. 
Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, uh, no, there is no rent geared to, to income um, proposed. Uh, the County of Simcoe in the past has funded some of those types of units. They're, they are tend, they do tend to be more legacy units in terms of um, there's not many of them around, and, and when they cease to exist, they, they have, I think, in the past kind of um, gone away, um, but it's certainly not in this uh, CIP, no. Go ahead, Councillor. Is it, is it possible to add um, rent geared to income to the scorecard? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, I, I suppose, uh, sorry, Councillor Reed, my apologies. Um, I suppose we, we could. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's the scorecard is about trying to um, get projects that actually, so we could add it in, but I don't think that it's going to necessarily make rent geared towards income units just come out of the woodwork, I guess, is, is it. it it still ties to the, the fact that projects have to be viable and have good business cases. And in fact, that's kind of one of the elements as well for the CIP is, is asking for some of those business cases from the applicants as well to see how the project itself looks. Okay, um, I'll leave it there. I, I'm, we have another week before council. I may have something to put together on that. Yeah, Councilor Rima, one of the questions I asked yesterday at the, so at the um, Affordable Housing in County housing uh, was if there had been any input to our CIP uh, by them to try to get more dollars for things like like this uh, they they had said that they'd given their feedback uh, was that something that they have asked for and if not them are there others that have requested rent geared to income funding through you, Mayor Nuttall, I'm glad that that was the answer because I'm like, I know we have spoken to the county about the CIP uh, and, and no, I mean, even from the rent geared toward income program, the county makes up the difference. Like that's kind of how the program and so no, the county didn't ask us to consider that. Um, and that's not, as I said, I don't think a program, I think the county is looking for um, other programs and they're keeping the units that exist, but it really is an old, like it is a legacy program even at the county level. Is there any way that you could provide to us what the feedback is for Council Ritma uh, from from our county friends as they are the, um, not tonight, it can be this week, they are the manager of all things social services. And it would be interesting, I think, for uh, Council to know what the uh, professionals who are running these programs on our behalf are communicating to us with regards to to this policy does that make sense yeah okay awesome uh, i'm going to go to councillor nagusi then councillor harvey councillor nagusi thank you mayor nadal miss banfield just uh, a clarification i know i sent you some email regarding uh, this agenda so for those who are building affordable houses in 2024 are eligible for this program Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Councillor um, Nagusi. So uh, the intention is for, for people that are building in 2024 will get the um, 2024 dollars, correct? Uh, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, just kind of to take off what uh, Councillor Reitman and Councillor Corsa were talking about. Um, I know it's been quite some time since we've see any, seen any co-op housing being built in the city. Um, has there been any recent interest by anybody coming forward when it comes to co-op housing? Because I think that's going to be really one of our key pieces to be able to get into this affordability piece um, to Councillor Corser's point about uh, rent geared to income and being able to keep the units as is opposed to sometimes losing that because they get sold. Um, will this CIP, just because it is a very complex report with multiple attachments just to get some clarity if somebody was to come forward with a co-op housing project would this CIP provide them with the appropriate resources when it comes to the DCs and stuff 
Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Councillor Harvey, absolutely. There's nothing that really a co-op housing is really more of a funding model and a tenure model and, and how it operates. And um, there certainly wouldn't be anything that per would preclude a co-op um, project from applying and, and most likely being successful. Um, I can tell you, though, from a staff level, we haven't had in recent memory um, a co-op type discussion or project or proposal kind of come through our doors, it, uh, but if they if there were, for sure, they could apply. Great, thank you, yeah, because I think the last one that I'm aware of would be the one in Allendale, but and that's got to be 30 plus years. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. It's also want to remind everyone, the Coral did proceed, is proceeding, finally, and it has nothing to do with our CIP, as I understand. <laughs> through through you, Mayor Nuttall, uh, it was through the previous CIP. Through the, right. <laughs> and, 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 and the provincial government, right? Because I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts, there's more dollars saved through no DCs whatsoever than there is through our CIP. And so I want to make that point because cross-market, we can do very little with $10 million on billions of dollars of development that's going to take place. Um, and one of the requests we approved previously was to ask the province with regards to the ability to uh, waive DCs in other circumstances other than just affordable housing, which we haven't been given, uh, which would be a, be a different tool, another tool, another time. Um, but between, there is a good piece of news here, that between the two projects for over 250 new units of affordable housing coming online and I don't there was a meaning there's the building that was built by Melchior management on Bayfield Street which I think is 30 units or so I, I can't think of another affordable housing development that's happened like in the past decade there was one on Penetang was that so so there are actually investments being made and there are units coming to market, but 250 units on 7,000 people on a wait list is very little. Uh, any, uh, Deputy Mayor, and then we'll go to the vote. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, this is more of a comment. So, you know, I couldn't agree more with uh, Councillor Harvey about the, the report and a ton of attachments, and I just wanted to thank staff. This is, this is big time. Uh, like, and the education sessions that your staff put on was very helpful, and look we're trying to build houses faster we throw lots of spaghetti against the wall and hope some of it sticks and you know there's no crystal balls of what program will work best but we've taken a lot like there were some of my concerns with we've offered too much in the CIP and it there's not a lot of money and it gets watered down and but understanding we don't know what's going to be ready it's all about accelerating building and it, sometimes it's it's not the greatest thing that can get built it's what can get built today and that's some of our problem that we just can't get shovels in the ground fast enough so i wanted to thank staff because it was a very extensive report and there was lots of work gone into this and the time that they spent with council and stuff was extremely helpful so thank you all right, uh, all uh, those in favor of the CIP, and it's approved. Uh, Council Ripma, the 2023 budget and business plan year end report is yours. If you could put the motion on the floor and then uh, any amendments or questions. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I held it and I'll put it on the floor as printed and I have an amendment. And. Um, the amendment is to add a paragraph um, that staff make a presentation to Finance and Responsible Governance Committee regarding the status of reserve funds with recommendations to bring the tax-funded reserve levels to the provincial average and to bring the tax capital reserve into conformity with the city's financial policy framework in the fall of 2024. And I can speak to that. Right, just to clarify, is that to bring it in con into conformity in fall of 2024? No, or is to that bring the report, report back yes. for 2024. <laughs> Perfect. Because that would be a lot of work. Uh, frankly, I'd, 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 
maybe I sh I'd really yeah. like to have it yeah. coming into conformity by 2024. I, I, but I all of a sudden don't want to be in charge of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, um, if you read, um, if, and I'm sure you all have read um, this report, and um, paragraphs 58, 60, and 63 cause me a great deal of heartburn. And I'm sure that is the case around the table as well. Um, those paragraphs basically say that our DC reserves, our tax capital reserve, are underwater, and our tax funded reserves are below comparable with other municipalities. So I'm, uh, I don't have any problem receiving the report. Um, I think we need to do that. Um, but I, I think we are being presented with a problem. And I think we need to spend some time and get some good advice from our uh, financial folks to uh, figure out how we write that piece of the ship. Um, and so uh, that's the reason behind my amendment. And I'm asking for support on that. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Ritman. Any other questions or comments? Uh, thank you for uh, the hold and the amendment. Uh, I think that we do have a lot of work to do on this front. I know Craig uh, today and, and every day is nervous about uh, these uh, these items in the medium term. I believe uh, we have some pain in the latter 20s and, and uh, the amount expected in terms of capital investment uh, versus what we have or we have on the plate to tax for. Uh, I will will remind Council that we have made some some very solid moves on this front as well in the sense that we increased uh, the the capital portion of our tax to 2% from 1 and I believe that the average it was actually instituted at and implemented at over the previous number of years was in the neighborhood of a half a percent. Uh, so there's four more four times more dollars going into hard infrastructure spending going forward but that doesn't solve the problem by itself. There's a ton of uh, you know, project management in the sense of not the implementation of the project, but managing the projects that need to take place over the next little while. And um, thank you for for holding that. And I was very pleased to hear that you were running with that today. So I think it was a very good catch and good work. Um, and you're creating lots more work for our public servants. So that's <laughs> that's fun too. <laughs> it, well, now uh, I didn't see any other questions or comments, so we'll call the vote. All those in favor of the amendment, it carries. All those in favor of the main motion. Oh, oh sorry, Councillor Morales. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, I'm just sending everybody right now. Um, I'm going to move on a, a quick amendment. Uh, this amendment came in light of the presentation that we had from Carnival Berry. If people remember, I think it was in January, February, that we had Carnival Berry uh, come and present to us about the. Uh, Latin festival that they um, put together last year. Um, so regarding that, uh, I touched base with staff shortly after that meeting and they told me that the appropriate time would be during this report. Uh, and this report obviously has been delayed for a bit. So here we are. Uh, and the amendment is as follows. Everybody has it in their email. Um, the $5,000 from the 2023 year end tax surplus be allocate, being allocated to the tax rate stabilization reserve be paid to Carnival Berry for their festival planned on Barry's waterfront on Saturday, August 31st and Sunday, September 1st, 2024, subject to events permits, event permits successfully being issued by the city. Um, and then also that Carnival Barry provide an event impact report to Barry City Council before March 2025 regarding their 2024 festival in the form of a slide deck or memo submitted to the city clerk. And I can speak to that, Mayor Nettle. The floor is yours, sir. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, I'll start from the bottom. Event impact report, KPIs are great, and I think they did a really good job at summarizing the impact that they had. Um, so event impact report, don't know if that's a lingo, but it sounds great. And uh, submit to city clerk, that way it's, there's flexibility. Um, that, way, that way they know who to send it to, and city clerk can share it with the uh, relevant uh, staff groups. Uh, they have a good amount of time to submit that as well. And then also, um, I just wanna 
uh, clarify on why the $5,000 and, and where it's coming from. I at that last meeting a couple months ago, but it's been a while, so I'll refresh. Um, we got a $5,000 uh, community contribution from Honeywell Communities, at Mayor Nuttall, as you know, and that uh, following the pro proper uh, guidelines and protocols, that check was uh, given to uh, the city treasurer. And uh, even though the uh, president of uh, Honeyfield uh, Community said that it was almost like a thank you, Bear Ward 9, for welcoming us to Barry, but specifically to Ward 9, this should go to Ward 9 community initiatives. And I told them, hey, can you earmark it? Makes my job easier when you earmark it. And they said, nope, it's up to you. Uh, it's up to you. Um, and it, I touched base with Mr. Marlar, and we're not able to formally, I'm not able to formally earmark it to a Ward 9 initiative. It has to go to the general coffers, and then council has to make a decision. Uh, but I do feel comfortable. Um, I'm not, not going against the Honeyfield wishes, but I do feel comfortable letting this benefit all residents of Barrie and not make it a Ward 9 thing. So I guess I'll just, uh, through Mayor Nuttall, very quickly hand off um, the floor. I guess ask Mr. Miller in the form of a question, um, can you confirm the, um, the, the events that I've outlined and add any color as you think is appropriate? Uh, yes, through you, uh, Mayor Nuttall. So we, we did receive a donation check of $5,000, just as uh, Councilor Morales uh, described. That was back in, I think, October, November 2023, give or take. So that money is deposited. It is part of the year-end surplus number. Uh, we never got any direction on how to spend that money. So um, everything he said is true and legit. So. Always makes me happy when staff say everything I say is true and legit. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Um, that's basically it. I said that at the meeting that I'd take a look into this and, and go from there. And members of council will note, so two things, the event impact report, again, KPIs are good. And I also put upon issuance of event permits. Many things happen and, yep, okay, perfect. So I just want to make sure that um, that is clear and, and there's, uh, uh, there's uh, good support for the organization. Thank you, Council Morales. It was a great event last summer. I'm sure it's going to be a great one this summer. Uh, any other questions or comments with regards to Council Morales' amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? It carries on the main motion. Any more comments or questions? Seeing none, I see those urged to, or quick to vote. It's <laughs> twice Councilor Kungo's put up her hand. Uh, all those in favor? It carries. That was the update from City Hall. Thank you for watching.